Today in the Master of Crafts program, forgotten musical instruments are taken on a new life in the hands of a Ukrainian master. The role Torban played in the history of Ukraine and why it was forced out of use under the influence of Russia. How a modern Ukrainian family is reviving both a traditional craft and authentic sounding. UATV is researching the history of instruments that have had a major impact on the development of world culture. It so happened that the most famous creators of musical instruments in history are violin makers Nicola Amati, Andrea Guarneri, Nicola Slupa, and, last but not least, Antonio Stradivari, not only made violins between the 17th and 19th centuries, but also shaped European musical culture. Their instruments became almost the main support for the self-realization of genius composers of the time. Classical music is impossible to imagine without violin parts. Now, violins, cellos and double basses are considered aristocratic instruments that can only be seen as an integral part of a symphony orchestra. However, things were exactly the opposite 300 years ago. Nobles contemptuously called violins instruments for servants and virtuosos playing them could only be heard in the streets. At the same time, a multitude of instruments that existed long before the violin was invented. For example, the lute, without which it is impossible to imagine musicians of Middle Ages and the Renaissance. However, creative searches of composers of the 21st century often bring to the surface the samples of craftsmanship of those who continue the old traditions no matter what. The Ukrainian luthier cannot say accurately how many violins and cellos he has made through his lifetime. The number is most probably between 50 and 100. Bowed stringed instruments were just a warm-up before the true work of his life. If we take purely authentic instruments, I made 25 hurdy-gurdies, 4 torbans, 5 kobzes, 3 cymbali or hammered dulcimers, and 1 gusli on table legs. Vadim Viksmin is always at work in his workshop. His wonderful instruments are born in one of the apartments of an ordinary high-rise building on the outskirts of Kiev. His daughters check the sound right on the spot. Papa Dad makes an instrument. My older sister has already mastered the violin, and I listen, watch, and feel it all. I just gradually get more into it. What is the Ukrainian Torban, and how is it different from the lute? Why was the musical instrument played by the famous hetman Ivan Mazepa forgotten? And how did a young Ukrainian woman become the only Torban player in the world who performs in the classical style? More on that next in the program. Vadim Viksnin belongs to a family of violinists who opened their business in the 20th century. He studied his future craft in the workshops of his father and uncle. From a young age, I've been making toys of all sorts using a hand plane and a saw. And then I started making musical instruments. First, I reworked children's violins, then the big ones, then cellos. And then I became a luthier on my own. The first instrument that I made in my uncle's workshop was a viola. However, the production of violins ended up not being very stable. During the turmoil associated with the collapse of the Soviet Union, nobody ordered instruments. Then Vadim had to work at a furniture factory just to feed his family. But his experience in restoration gave him an idea. What if he expanded the range of instruments and revived the undeservedly forgotten samples of material culture? At some point, they showed interest in how it sounded earlier, how it was earlier, and the revival of the Renaissance Baroque instruments began in Europe. Take the lute, for example. The fact that this ancient plucked string instrument is in trend, again, is easily demonstrated by the most widespread art cinema. In one of the open frames of the well-known movie directed by Jim Jarmusch, Only Lovers Left Alive, Tom Hiddleston's character sits holding a lute. According to the plot, he is a thousand-year-old vampire who values good instruments more than people. He would definitely have liked Vadim Viksnin's works, although so far the luthier has only made a lute for his daughter. Look, first of all, the string action of this instrument is very low. You don't have to push down on the strings, they are very soft. But the instrument is very sonorous and sustains its sound for a long time. This is due to the fact that strings on plucked instruments of that time were arranged in courses, that is, you pluck one and two ring out. 
Vadim Vixnein's lute is a Baroque one, made in the spirit of the 16th century. But how can a non-professional distinguish it from other similar instruments? The luthier gives a simple hint to pay attention to where the strings are attached. Look, the bridge is very low here. It's a feature of all lutes from among all the ancient instruments. If it were a modern instrument, a guitar for example, it would have been here. That is, the soundboard gives a better response with a brighter sound. In the last 50 years, Europeans became interested in lutes again, and not just historical reconstructors, but also modern musicians. But the main Ukrainian relative of this instrument was undeservedly forgotten in its homeland. We're talking about the Torban, which is indeed easy to confuse with the lute. They are similar, but you will see the difference right away. This is the main difference of our Torban. And these strings were added to the Baroque lute. Another feature that differentiates the torban from the lute is the fact that the bridge is located much higher in the body. The neck is shorter because of that. More strings also mean more bending stress. It also means that parts for two seven-string guitars can be played on one torban at once. It can have from 30 to 40 strings. Such a beautiful instrument in its complexity and refinement appeared on Ukrainian lands at the beginning of the 18th century. Few Ukrainians know this, but the image of a torban can be found on the back of a 10 hryvnia bill. And on its front is the most famous torban player in history, Hetman Ivan Mazepa. As legend has it, while still a young man, he played this instrument at the court of the Polish king and carried the love to music through his entire life. The Hetman sought to unite many Ukrainian lands under his leadership, but the then Tsar of Muscovy, Peter the Great, had other plans. Subsequently, the historians of the Russian Empire would not only call Ivan Mazepa a traitor, but would also try to erase the memory even of his musical heritage. Nevertheless, the Ukrainian Torban survived until the 20th century, and after the establishment of Soviet power, it ended up being an undesirable instrument. One of the Soviet dictionaries also had a beautiful remark on this subject. Due to the fact that the production of this instrument is very difficult, and playing it is also difficult and requires special skills, the instrument is to be considered worthless and forgotten. But that is most likely due to the music that was played on the Torban, which consisted of songs that glorified the victories of Ukrainian weapons. As a result, the Torban was replaced by the Bandura, which is much easier to manufacture and handle. The perfect instrument for street musicians, but with much less possibilities. That's why Vadim taught his daughter Maria to play the Torban instead, and in an authentic manner, which is not used by any musician, neither in Ukraine nor in the world today. The classical school is older, because it was played back in the times of King Zygmunt III. There was a whole capella of Torbanists in Poland, although many of them were from Ukraine. And then all the hetmans also played according to the classical school, that is, they held the Torban like a lute. And we fret strings on the neck like on the Baroque lute, but this hand also plays the treble strings. The young Torbanist clearly knows her theory well, but it's better to show it once than explain it a hundred times. Especially for UATV, she performs the folk Ukrainian song Bohun's Thought.
It is noteworthy that in 1999 the Polish film with Fire and Sword, one of the main characters performs this song on the Kobza, although according to Vadim, the author of the original novel Henrik Sienkiewicz described the Torban. <laughs> The Cossacks often played these instruments in the street. In Sienkiewicz's book, With Fire and Sword, there is a very beautiful scene where Torben plays ride horses ahead of the army. Letting go of the reins, looking up at the sky, they ride in the beginning of the battle and begin singing a song. Such sound is stipulated by the design of the instrument. The Torben has a volumetric body that serves as a natural amplifier but requires very fine tuning how it is done. Obviously, it begins with the body. See, the body is made of small parts. They are 1 and 2 millimeters thick, that is very thin. They bend and they are given a certain shape. And then, starting from the middle, they are glued together to make a boat like this. The body of this instrument is made of cherry wood, while the soundboard is made of spruce. Vadim says that it is necessary to choose different types of wood that let sound waves through equally. Either way, the material must be very well dried. I have a large stock of wood that I got from my father. I make the best instruments out of all wood. There is a good craftsman in the Carpathians who sells old, matured wood. Carving a soundboard is an art of its own. The Torben has three sets of strings that sound different. Carving the body with a flat lid of the same thickness is the equivalent of killing the instrument, says Vadim. The thick bass strings sound better when the soundboard underneath them is thinner, it allows for more vibration, and the high strings need a thicker soundboard. They resonate better that way. There is no random thickness and not a single random tone. I made the first instrument just to hear how everything would sound. Vadim also makes and glues the fretboard and tuning pegs by hand. Factory production is contraindicated for the Torben, as there are too many nuances that the luthier does not even tell about. Suffice it to say that 15 layers of lacquer thinner than a hair are applied to the body of the instrument. Vadim uses nylon strings because the traditional catgut strings are too expensive and impractical for performing musicians. In addition, the Torben of Ivan Mazeba could not have such a setup. There are four pickups inside, which are all connected. So we see that looking at it like this, it's an ordinary instrument. But pulling this button out reveals the input jack. So this Torben can be easily connected to modern stage equipment and is suitable for performances in concert halls. And Maria has more than enough such invitations. She has already played the Torben in Rome and Berlin, but she mostly performs at various festivals in Ukraine. I play with Ukrainian bands that perform classical music, with Baroque music ensembles, Renaissance music ensembles and folk rock bands. Basically, I play everywhere where the interesting sound of the Torben is needed with its deep sound or its capabilities. Proven that there is a place for the Torben in modern music, Maria has recovered a song with the Ukrainian band Voanerges. Будет ты нам дякувать будет.
dish Thus, the instrument of Hetman Mazeppa has found its place in modern musical culture after being forgotten for centuries. All that thanks to a family of passionate luthiers who have done everything possible for the tour band to be played again on Ukrainian land and far beyond its borders. <laughs> 